if you have found overcoming the dragon ministry to be a source of strength and help to your spiritual walk in these trying times, why not show your support today? Just $1 a month from each of our listeners will help with operating costs and keep us on the air. The Prince of Darkness is bringing his full wrath in these last days, and Overcoming the Dragon Ministry stands ready to defend the gospel and overcome his lies with the Sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Brother Skinner relentlessly marches forward through enemy lines, tearing down Satan's strongholds and setting the captives free. Your investment in this ministry, large or small, will be rewarded in this life and the life to come. God bless you. The most powerful weapon that exists on planet Earth. A weapon that is more powerful than any weapon of mass destruction on this Earth. A weapon that Satan cannot resist. This is the most feared weapon of all the weapons. Satan does not fear nuclear power. Satan does not fear any power on this earth that man can put together. No matter how potent, no matter how explosive, no matter how powerful, It cannot defeat the devil. There is one weapon that Satan is terrified of. One weapon. More powerful than any weapon. Man thinks they have really got a corner if they have nuclear weapons of mass destruction. They really think they have something that is going to make them to be powerful, going to make them be strong. Folks, listen. The real enemy behind the scenes is the devil. Flesh and blood is not our enemy. We're not wrestling with flesh and blood. Man produces weapons of mass destruction only to annihilate eventually even themselves. Not too long ago, a minister asked God, How long are you going to let this go? How far are you going to let it go? How long are you going to let this go on? And the Lord spoke to this minister and said, If I don't cut it off pretty quick, he said, the fools are going to blow themselves up. That's where the nuclear weapons of mass destruction is headed. Annihilation. In fact, man would wipe out his own species. That's what he would eventually do, left to himself. He would self-destruct. He would destroy all those around him and then destroy himself in the process. Now, if there was only one man left on the earth and there was no animals and no, no women, just one man left on the earth, he would eventually uh, kill himself because he would be insane, brought to insanity because of loneliness. That's why the Lord said it's not good for a man to be alone. And God didn't want Adam sleeping or laying with animals, even though that's what they're doing today. Man laying with animals. 
women with women, men with men, working that which is unseemly. And God calls this confusion. That's what the word is in the original Hebrew for a man laying with beast. Confusion. So if you ever thought about what Babylon has to do with its confusion, has to do with homosexuality, has to do with total, complete perversion. Where the right ways of God are totally perverted. Now, I want to share with you from the scripture the most powerful weapon. Now, you think about this for a moment. Man has the most powerful weapons to their knowledge, right? To their knowledge. There's not any weapon more powerful than a nuclear weapon. Nothing more powerful than the atom bomb or the atom being used in producing weapons of mass destruction. Being able to uh, create fission. Producing fission from atoms. When you get into the area of weapons of mass destruction, you're dealing with something that is so unstable, that is so volatile. And even unpredictable. I mean, you just don't know what is going to take place when a a weapon of mass destruction is detonated. You don't know, really, the outcome of it. Amen? Now, when you think about uh, the enemy, Satan, the devil... His name means destruction or destroyer. Everything in his path he destroys. He just totally annihilates and destroys with no thought. He gives no thought. His ultimate purpose is to destroy. Are you listening? The thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Eventually, to destroy. Then there is only one weapon that can overcome and destroy the destroyer. Praise God. Only one weapon. Now listen to me, folks. The devil does not care that man has weapons of mass destruction. In fact, he wants them to. But what he really doesn't want is you and I with the weapons that are not carnal. Are you listening? Turn with me, if you will, to the scripture. Psalms 29, verse 4. Psalms 29, verse 4. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. Now listen to me, folks. When I looked up this word powerful, I only found this word powerful shows only three times. It's only revealed three times in the Bible. We ought to pay attention to that. You only find the word powerful three times in the Bible. 
three times. You should pay attention to that. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 10. Speaking of Paul the Apostle, for his letters, they say, are weighty and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak and his speech contemptible. Are you listening? His letters are weighty and powerful. Who cares what man thinks about us? Amen? You and I possess the word of God, and the word of God would possess you and I. Do we really understand the power of God? Do we really get it, people? Do we understand that we are a threat to the devil's kingdom. Somebody with a weapon of mass destruction, a nuclear weapon, is not a threat to the devil. You and I, amen, that in the eyes of men may be weak and contemptible, are the ones that have the real weapons of mass destruction. Think about this with me for a moment. A grandmother, amen, that knows how to bake cookies and she knows how to pray. Are you listening? Are you listening, folks? She knows how to pray and she knows how to hear the voice of Almighty God. She's more of a threat to the devil than all the dictators on the earth with weapons of mass destruction together. One grandmother. Just one. Just one grandmother, praise God, that knows how to pray and hear the voice of God. How many know that Satan fears the most those that have a word from God to set the captives free? He doesn't want you to deliver the captive. He doesn't want you to win souls. He doesn't care about the weapons of warfare, which are carnal. The devil doesn't care about those weapons, people. Man cares about them, and people get uh, all excited about them. Are you listening? But the devil, he doesn't care. What he fears is that word of God that's going to consume him. Are you listening? Jesus is going to consume the devil, with the words of his mouth. Oh yes, the devil is going to be defeated with the word of God. The word of God. Amen? Hallelujah. You hear all this talk today of Donald Trump saying he's going to defeat, defeat, defeat. His words mean nothing, people. They're all lies. But when God says something, amen, his word is powerful. His voice is powerful. His voice is full of majesty. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. His voice, the voice of the Lord, the voice of God. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, the third place in the scripture, this word powerful is, for the word of God is quick 
It's life-giving and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Hallelujah. The devil doesn't care if someone's walking down the street with an arsenal of weapons. People may get excited and the police department might get excited and the FBI might get excited and the military might get excited. Amen? But the devil does not get excited. That bores him. He's bored. Are you listening? But when he sees a man of God, he sends all the hell against that man of God. What's he doing? He wants to resist. He wants to hinder. He wants to confuse. He wants to distract the man of God. Or even that little grandmother that knows how to make biscuits and gravy. That knows how to bake a pie. Are you listening, people? You don't know what I'm saying to you here. It's not about the grandmother. It's about the word of God. The word of God is powerful. And that grandmother has the word of God. Look out for that grandmother with the word of God. Lord Jesus, help us to understand today, Lord, how powerful your word is. Help us to understand it's not by might, it's not by power of the natural, but by your spirit, Lord. It's by your spirit. Glory to God. People, we must understand the power that we have in the word of God, that we have the power of the weapons of mass destruction to bring down the kingdom of darkness. Glory to God. To set the captives free. Hallelujah. And the devil is afraid of us. Hallelujah. He's afraid of those that have the word of God. He's afraid of those that walk in the word. He's afraid of those that march in the truth of God's holy word. He's afraid of those that walk in the spirit. Hallelujah to God. He's afraid. He, he cowers glory to God when he sees the saints of God marching with the truth of the holy God of heaven. Hallelujah. We are not a minority when we're walking with Jesus. We're not a minority glory to God when we're walking in the power of the Holy Ghost when we have the word of God in our mouths, hallelujah. It's sharper than any two-edged sword, glory to God. People, we must understand that we are serving the living God. We serve the God of all power, of all might. His voice is full of majesty, hallelujah. I love him. Don't you love Jesus? Aren't you glad we're on the winning side, hallelujah? Get a word from God. Get a word from the Lord, brothers and sisters. I don't care what it is that's coming against you. If it's cancer, get a word from God and defeat that thing. Amen. If it's a marriage breakup, get a word from God and let God restore your marriage. Hallelujah. God's word is powerful. Hallelujah. Powerful. Hallelujah. Oh my, the devil hates this message, brothers and sisters. He hates this message being preached, and if he could stop it, he would. Oh, I remember the last place that my wife and I lived in not too long ago, just a few days ago, we've moved now, but the place we used to live in, the devil would have people revving up their car engines and all the noise that would be going on as soon as the word of God began to be preached. But we're in a new place now, very quiet, very secluded, amen, and we have everything that's electronic shut down where the devil can't interrupt, where the devil can't distract, hallelujah, and he does not like it, brothers and sisters. 
He'd like to shut down the internet right now while I'm preaching. Hallelujah. How many know that we're in the last of the last days? How many know we're down to the last hour? How many know it's all about the souls of man being delivered out of the devil's hands? Amen. Being delivered out of the powers of darkness. Being delivered, amen, from the chains of darkness. Men are lost and bound, amen, by the devil. The God of this world has blinded their minds lest they would believe, lest the light of the glorious gospel should shine unto them. I'm right now wielding the most powerful weapon on this planet right now. Amen. I've got a laptop in front of me. I'm I'm preaching into a smartphone, brothers and sisters. I don't have a satellite uh, like uh, TBN. Amen. But I have the most powerful weapon on the planet right now. We have a broadcast that goes out into all the world. We don't have millions of dollars coming in from our supporters. We can, we're doing well to get a dollar a month if someone's willing to even give us a dollar. We get all the accolades from God's people, how they praise us. And they say, oh, you're doing such a great, but they won't even share one dollar, not one dollar. We don't have the support of the world. We don't even have the support of God's people when it comes to finances. But I want you to know if God be for us, who can be against us? Hallelujah. The devil can't stand against us. He can't stop us. Hallelujah. We're preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Hallelujah. Praise God. The devil would like to stop this message right now. He'd like to stop this message, brothers and sisters, and he can't unless God okays it, unless God stamps his approval and says, okay, devil, you can do it. Oh, but I want you to know, God wants this message to go out right now. The devil's not going to shut it down. The devil's not going to stop it. The devil's not going to distract from it. The devil's not going to hinder us. Amen. Because this gospel shall be preached in all the world, and then the end is going to come. Hallelujah. The Lord told me, I guess it's been over two years now ago, the Lord said, I have given you my own sword. I've given you my own robe. I've given you my own mantle. I've given you my own sword, son. Learn to wield it. Are you listening? Just like Jonathan gave to David his own. God, his son, has given us his own. Brothers and sisters, we're carrying the sword of the Lord. We're carrying the sword of the Lord and we're dressed in the armor of God. We're dressed in the presence of God. Hallelujah. The devil doesn't stand a chance when we're walking in the power of God. When we know whose we are and we know, amen, where we stand. Amen. The Lord said to me, another time the Lord said to me, he said, learn to wield the sword of truth, for by the sword of truth you will make men free. I understand there's not a thing on this planet right now that is more costly, more powerful. Amen. In the uh, possession of a saint of God, of a soldier of the Lord, than the sword of the Lord. Hallelujah. Just as Jonathan gave to David his own sword. Oh, yes. Hallelujah to God. He gave him his own robe. He gave him his own mantle, as as it were. Hallelujah to God. Just like that, Jesus Christ has robed us in his own righteousness. He has put onto us his own mantle of power, the Spirit of God to be clothed with power from on high. And he's given to you and I his own sword, the Word of God. Amen. 
Praise God. When you go to battle, you're not going out to battle with your own weapons. You're not going out to battle with your own armor. You're going out, amen, in the presence of God, and you're going out in Christ. And when you meet that devil face to face, the devil doesn't see you. The devil sees him. The devil sees the Christ. The devil sees the word. The devil sees his worst enemy. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. That's who the devil fears, amen. He doesn't fear you and I. He fears the devil. Or he fears Jesus, amen. The devil fears Jesus Christ. Are you listening? Hallelujah. The devil's worst enemy is Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. He didn't even want Jesus to go to the cross. He tried to keep him from getting to the cross. He knew if Jesus got to the cross, he knew it was over. He knew he was defeated. He did everything he could to keep Jesus from getting to that cross. Hallelujah. But when Jesus was on that cross and he said, it is finished. And he said, Father, into thy hands, I commend my spirit. The Son of God left that body and there was a shadow cast across hell. And guess where the devil was? He was hiding in hell. Oh, yes. Listen, people. Jesus went down there to get the keys. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, devil, give me those things. They're not yours anymore. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. He is defeated. The devil has been defeated. And Jesus Christ has given to us, amen, freedom from sin, freedom from darkness. Hallelujah. All power has been given into that name. That name, Jesus, all power. Jesus said to his own disciples, he says, Behold, I give you all power over the power of the enemy, and nothing by any means shall harm you. Jesus didn't give that to his elite. Jesus did not give that to those that were fully mature. Jesus gave that to the babes. Amen. He came rejoicing, saying, Father, I rejoice because... You seem, you, you're, you're in your wisdom and the way you do things, it pleased you to give this power to babes. Hallelujah. Folks, listen, it's not about us. It's his power, but we've got to learn how to wield it. We've got to learn how to use it. We've got to learn how to direct it. Amen. Amen. We got to learn that there's the power of life and death in the tongue, and we've got to use it accordingly. Amen. We don't want to use our tongue to kill our brothers and sisters. Are you listening? No, we want to speak life with the word, with our tongues. Amen. If we have a word from God, we'll speak life. Amen. But there are some things that need to die. Amen. I remember one time I was preaching and at the end of the message, the pastor of the church, he said, I want you to pray for my newborn uh, grandson. He said, he's in the hospital. My daughter just had him. And I just heard, it was like, I guess it was during the actual sermon, during the message where his daughter was in the hospital giving birth and he had to leave there and go there. But before they left, he wanted me to pray for him. He said he was, they said he's in complications and he has a brain tumor. And he says, I want you to pray for him. Well, I had just got done preaching a message on cursing the fig tree. So I was walking in faith and I had fullness of faith at that moment when he asked and I cursed that cancer. Amen. Three days later, that pastor called me and he said, good news. He said, my grandson's totally, completely well. There's no brain tumor. Oh, yes. We spoke death to that tumor. We cursed that tumor. Amen. We didn't speak life to the tumor. We spoke death. We spoke a curse on that thing, just like Jesus cursed the fig tree. There is power in the word of God. Remember when Peter spoke over Ananias and Sapphira, they dropped dead. 
The power of life and death is in our tongue when the word of God is in our tongue. Amen? Oh, yes. I believe we're in the hour now when it's coming down to a command. God has his commanders. God has those that have his word. Amen? It's not about, hey, take it or leave it. It's not about that anymore. Now it's down to the wire to where if you don't obey God's voice, if you're not obeying God's word, you are rejecting his command. As one of the Lord's commanders, amen, you must obey the truth. You must obey the word of God. It's your only deliverance. It's your only hope. If you reject and disobey the word of God that I'm preaching to you, you're doing it to your own destruction. We are in the hour, we're not mincing our words, people, we're in the hour where the word of God is being preached, as it were, a command from Almighty God. God is commanding his people. God is commanding his troop. God is raising up an army that must understand that the word of Jesus Christ is not just an idea. It's not just something you say, well, take it or leave it. When the Lord speaks, it's a command. Are you listening? It's a command. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. Full of majesty. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Folks, it doesn't matter what's coming your way. It doesn't matter what you're up against. Get a word from God and speak that word. Jesus said, if I give you a word and you speak that word, you can move mountains. Don't ever think you're going to move a mountain in your own voice, your own words. But if you get a word from God and speak that word, that mountain's got to move. And I mean the literal mountain. I'm talking about a literal mountain. I'm not talking about hypothetically. I'm not talking about symbolically. We're talking about a literal mountain that is in the way. Are you listening? I remember hearing about a little grandmother that was tired of looking out her kitchen window and and seeing a mountain and not seeing a view. She wanted to see a view and this mountain was in her way. And she wanted to see the view that she knew was on the other side of that mountain. Now, you and I would settle for the mountain a lot of times, amen, but there was something that she knew was on the other side of that mountain. There was a prairie. There was a beautiful landscape that she wanted to see when she looked out her mountain or looked out her window. And while she was doing her dishes, she didn't want to see this big obstruction of a mountain. And so she simply prayed and she said, God, you said if we had faith, a grain of much to seed. You said we could speak to this mountain and it would be removed. And she stood there in her kitchen and she pointed at that mountain and she said, get out of the way, hallelujah. And it wasn't a matter of a few days and they had the excavators out there and the trucks were out there and they were moving that mountain. And I want you to know man can move dirt around, but God moves mountains. Glory to God. If a man can move uh, uh, some dirt and move a mountain, God can speak to that mountain and pick it up and and move it out of the way. How does he do it? An earthquake can come. Hallelujah to God. It doesn't matter, people, but God can do it. It doesn't matter how he does it. If he wants to do it, he can do it without an earthquake, without any natural occurrence. Oh, yes, he can. Praise God. But for that little grandmother, God chose to do it by the little shovels Amen. On these big, huge trucks and these cranes and little tiny shovels, little boys playing in God's sandbox. Hallelujah. As they were out there moving a mountain, they were just playing in God's sandbox. Hallelujah to God. People, we better start understanding how big our God is and realize how small we are. We must realize, amen, that we're in God's uh, garden on this earth. Hallelujah. And when we plant a garden or we plant a little uh little rose or little uh flower bed in our uh property and think we've done some great thing oh praise god this is the lord's garden 
and we're just planting in his garden. We're little children just planting, playing in the, in the, in the Lord's garden. Are you listening? God's not going to allow. He said, in my holy mountain, they're not going to hurt and destroy anymore. God's going to remove the evil from this earth. Praise the Lord. He's going to remove all the wickedness from this earth, all those that hurt and those that mean for ill. God's going to remove them to the point that even the child will be able to sit on the on the hole of a snake and not be bit. Amen. Praise the Lord. God's going to remove the knowledge of evil. God's going to remove all that which is hurtful from the earth. Praise the Lord. Brothers and sisters, it's my job to remind you how big your God is. It's my job to help you to magnify the Lord. Amen. Let's magnify the Lord and stop magnifying our problems. Let's stop magnifying the devil and let's magnify the Lord. Amen. Let's see him as he really is. Even though he doesn't need to be magnified, but he needs to be magnified in our perception. Because a lot of times we see the Lord as this puny God that can't do anything that this God that, oh, I don't want to bother him today. He's so old and decrepit. No, he's not. He's in full, total, complete control of every single thing that is going on, not only in your life, but in every single life upon this planet. God is in full, total control, in total command, and the devil knows it. Hallelujah. He knows he has a short time. He knows his time's running out. Brothers and sisters, get this message out to somebody you love. Get this gospel out to someone you love because they need to know the truth. Hallelujah. Time is running out. Amen. Time's running out. Glory to God. We serve the living God, brothers and sisters. The world, they have their trinkets. The world, they have their their little gods. They hang around their necks that they put on their shells and their little gods that they carry around in the palms of their hands while they carry their gods around upon their bodies. Hallelujah to God. Our God carries us. Hallelujah. He carries us. They carry their gods. Our God carries us. There's quite a difference there, wouldn't you say? Our God carries us. Their God, their gods, they carry. They got to carry their gods around. Are you listening? Our God carries us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are you letting the Lord carry you through those hard places in your life? Are you leaning on him? Are you letting Jesus carry you through the dark times. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. How come there's only one set of footsteps in the sand, Jesus? My child, because when the times were easy, I let you walk beside me and you could see your own footprints there, but the times when it got hard, I picked you up. That's why there's only one set of footsteps in the sand. Thank God. There's a lot of places I had to go through in my life, people. And I thank God for that one set of footsteps in the sand. I never would have, I never would have made it. God knows I never would have made it. I never would have made it if it wasn't for those nail-scarred hands, those nail-scarred feet. If it wasn't for that lowly Nazarene walking on the Sea of Galilee. (laughs) If it wasn't for Jesus. If it wasn't for Jesus, I never would have made it. I never would have made it, people. Maybe you have that same testimony. Maybe you're willing to admit the truth. You couldn't make it without Jesus. None of us could ever make it without Jesus. None of us 
could ever make heaven our home without Jesus. Amen. Thank God. Thank God that Jesus takes the heavy end. And look, he gives us the light end. And thank God his yoke's easy and it's not heavy. His burden's not heavy. It's light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't need to try to prove anything to the Lord anymore, people. I hope you have the same heart, the same opinion. This is no time to be trying to strut ourselves in front of everybody else trying to walk on water. No. If the Lord doesn't bid you to come before you initiate him to get you to come out on the water. You just wait on the Lord. Amen. Praise God. The Lord let Peter come out on the water, but Peter wasn't ready. The Lord knew he wasn't ready. He used it as a lesson, not only to Peter, but to the others. Are you listening? Peter was really humbled out of that experience. Not all the way humbled because he still had to go through some other places to humble him even more. He had to come to the place where he even denied that he even knew Jesus, not because he didn't love Jesus, but because he was terrified for his life. People, don't be like Peter in that sense. Though all forsake you, Lord, I won't. Don't don't be like that. Don't be proud. Take heed when you think you stand, lest you fall. Lest you become as a little child, you can't enter his kingdom. The man-child in the book of Revelation, we're the child. He's the man. He's the man. It's Christ within us, the hope of glory. You and I will always be his child. We need to humble ourselves and realize he loves us. Amen. The man-child, fully developed, Christ in us, the hope of glory. Allowing Christ to fully, totally grow within us. The word of God to fullness, to walk in fullness of faith. Just a child. Are you understanding the truth today, people? Because you're hearing it probably many for the first time. Christ in you and I, the hope of glory. We're not the ones. It's not about us. It's the Christ that's in us. That's the attention. That's the focus. Amen? Men of God, we would see Jesus. They didn't want to see the disciples. Amen? The woman at the well come running and saying, Come see a man that told me all things I ever did. Is this not the Christ? We believe, not because you told us, but we have heard him for ourselves. We believe now, not because you told us, but because we've heard his word for ourselves. Hallelujah. Have you met the man yet? Pilate said, Behold the man. John the Baptist said, Behold the man. Hallelujah. Have you beheld the man yet? Have you beheld the Christ? Behold the man that taketh away the sin of the world. Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Pilate says, behold the man. I've never seen a man like this. I've seen a lot of men in my time that have been beaten. I've seen them beaten an inch of their life by the Roman soldiers, but I've never seen a man like this. He never flinched. He never moved. He never made a sound. He never lifted his voice. He never shed a tear. He's a man, glory to God. He's a real man. Hallelujah. The Marines, the special forces, I don't care who they think they are, they can't hold a candle to Jesus Christ. Behold the man. Hallelujah. And that man, that son of man, that son of God, he wants to come in to your heart and make you what you can't make yourself. Hallelujah. The man-child. Hallelujah. 
How'd they overcome the dragon? The man. The blood of the man. The word of the man. The life of the man. Hallelujah. God Almighty says, let's make man in our own image. In our own likeness. Let's give them dominion. <laughs> Hallelujah. God started with the animals. Amen. Hallelujah. Did, did you know that God's plan was eventually to give man dominion over the angels? Lucifer knew that. He didn't want to lose his position. He wanted to rule over man. Are you listening? So now he's rallying the world together in rebellion against the almighty God to rule over man and rule eventually over God. Well, that's never going to happen. Amen? But the, the, their believing is lie, just like the angels believed it and were deceived. Hallelujah. Glory to God, people. I don't have to be the man anymore. You know how they say in this world, they say, like they're even saying about Donald Trump, he's the man. <laughs> Donald Trump's a pansy. He's a coward. He walks around with a bully spirit. He's not a man. Amen. A man doesn't talk about women the way he does. That's not how a man treats women. A, a man treats women as a lady. A man doesn't uh, provocatively dress his daughter and say it's okay for her to be in magazines that are provocative and, and uh, vile. Amen. Let his daughter walk on a catwalk when she's a teenager. That's not what a man does. It's been a long time since a real man's been in the White House. Are you listening, people? It's because it's been a long time since there's been a man of God in the White House. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, I have to, I'd have to step down to be the president of the United States. I'd have to step down from where God, the high calling that God is calling me to, to sit with him in his throne. Why would I want to step down from the throne to sit Amen. In a little chair, behind a little desk, in a little house. Amen. And act like I'm really something when I'm really nothing. When I'm supposed to be a public servant. And I'm supposed to be an example to all the public servants. And I'm supposed to be for the people, not against the people. Why would I step down? Why would I step down? Uh-uh. I understand to sit with Jesus in his throne, I've got to become a servant. I've got to be a servant. Amen? Hallelujah. And if I keep humbling myself, one day, the Lord's going to exalt me all the way to his own throne. To sit with him in his throne. The man-child. To rule the nations with a rod of of iron. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. How many know, folks, it's almost over? How many know there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth? The former things are going to pass away. This earth that you see today is going to pass away. It's all going to pass away. Amen? There's going to be a new heavens and a new earth. Who knows what God's decided to do with the universe, all those planets and all those galaxies. Amen. But I'm eager to find out. Amen. Hallelujah. I was talking to my wife the other day. I said, who knows if God may raise up another, another generation of people after everything's said and done. Amen. And let them rule over you and I. I don't know what God's going to do, but we better not fall into the same trap as Lucifer. We better be willing. 
Amen. We better let God deal with our hearts now. Amen. How is it possible that the angels that were created by God could rebel against him? You ever thought about that? That God created the angels with the capacity to do their own will. That's scary. But that's love. God doesn't want robots. If you're going to stand before the Lord and do his will with your own will, your will must become perfected in his will. You can't have even the slightest bit of rebellion in your heart. Because down the road, are you listening? Look what happened with the angels. They rebelled against God. Lucifer rebelled against God. God must have put the capacity there for him to do that. God said he creates evil. Are you listening? God creates evil. God is the one that creates evil. But that doesn't mean God wants us to have anything to do with it just because he created it. You think it's not evil when God destroys his enemies? You think that's a good thing? No, that's an evil thing. But God's just and he's holy. This generation thinks they can stand up against God. When I read about fearing God, the word fear is the word phobia, the word terror. We better choose who we're going to be terrified of. We better choose who we're going to have a phobia of. Fear God and depart from sin, depart from iniquity. God is to be feared. Amen? I hear them say, oh, well, that's a healthy fear. Well, read the Bible. It says terror. It's time that you and I walk and tremble before God. It's time that you and I tremble at his word and stop playing games. Hallelujah. God bless you.